let's just see how we would add together two floating point numbers. If we've got 42, and so in floating point representation, that would be 10, 10, 10 times 2 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's add on 6. So 1, 1, 0 is 6, and that's times 2 to the 2. So we now need to add these two numbers together. Now, before we would just add them together by going that plus that, that plus that, that plus that, that plus that. We can't do that with um, floating point numbers because the bit patterns for these things mean that these are going to look like very, very different things. What we have to do is, first of all, line them up so the bits are in the same place. So we need to shift this one down so that the bit here, which represents 4, is in the same position as the bit that represents 4 here. And so the number of spaces we need to shift this right is the difference between the big one and the, the little one. In this case, it's three spaces. So one, two, three spaces. So we shift it three spaces to the right. And so the first step is rather than just adding the numbers together, we have a, a step now where we've got to expand them out of the bit representations. Because remember that this would actually be 0, 1, which is encoded 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And this, the 8-bit exponent, this is going to be, what, 127 plus 5, which is 128 plus 4. So that's going to be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. So it's going to be something like that. So we've got that. So that's what that's represented by. And this one is going to be similar. It's going to be represented by 0. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 bits. The one's already encoded implicitly, zero and zero is down there. I'll ignore them for now. And we're going to store this as one, zero, 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 one. So the numbers are actually got in memory in our computer are represented like this. So the first thing we have to do is get them to a point where we can add them. We can't just add these two numbers together anymore. And we can see that dead simply by looking over here. If we had one plus one, we'd get one zero as the answer, which means the answer would have a one here, which means it would suddenly go from positive numbers to a negative number, which is definitely wrong. So we need to unpack this representation into a form that we can add together. Now, one way we could do that is just work out how many bits we would need and assign the bits into the right place and do that. But we can actually use some sort of tricks. We know, for example, that if we're adding two numbers together with a certain number of bits, in this case, 24 bits, the biggest number that we could add two numbers together and get a result would have a value of two, roughly around 2 to the 25. The other thing we know is that one of these numbers is going to have a greater exponent than the other. So what we can do is we can say, OK, let's keep that one where it is and shift this one, or divide this one by 2, so that the exponent on it would be the same. So if we shift this one place to the left, we'd end up with this as 0 0.1 times 2 to the 3. If we shift it another place to the left, it would be 0 point so on times 2 to the 4. Until we end up with that 1 lined up there, and that becomes times 2 to the 5. And then we have 0, 0, point zero, zero 1. There we are. So we did the first step, we need to unpack them from the representations into forms that we can add together. And then we need to shift this one so that the exponents are the same. And so we take the, the smaller one and shift it so the exponents are lined up. Now we can add those numbers together. So we can now add these bits together. Notice we could produce a number one bit bigger than this if we add them together. One plus one is two, for example. So zero plus zero is zero. One plus one is zero, carry one. Zero plus one plus one is zero, carry one. One plus one is zero, carry one, zero plus zero plus one is one, one, two to the five. And then we ended up here times two to the five as I've added six onto 42 and I've got 48 as a result. So he's done the maths and I could write that back now, but potentially we could have ended up with a two here. If we added up one and one, for example, we'd get two. And so we need to do a final step once we've done the addition, which is to normalize this back potentially into the normal form which in this case would be 1.1000001. 1. 0, 0, 0, 0, times 2 to the 5. So the reason that floating point numbers take much longer to process is that as well as doing the addition, which you can do in exactly the same way, 
Um, you also have to take the bits, unpack them from the representation, shift them along so they match up things, then do the addition, and then potentially shift them back to get it back into the normalized form, the standard scientific representation. The other problem you get is even though we can pack all these numbers into 32 bits, the representation, when we slide them along, we may end up needing more than 32 bits, as many as 48 to represent things, because if we have to slide this one along to the point here, and we're doing the maths, that we actually need 48 bits to do the calculation. Of course, that means you then have to do on the 32-bit CPU two additions for that half and then that half and carry the value over from one to the other, which again would slow things down. In hardware, you can build your representations to take care of this. If you've got 64-bit doubles, you know that you perhaps don't need more than a certain number of bits to represent it, and you can build the hardware to take all this into account, and it ends up being much faster. That must be quite fiddly to do with standard hardware. So is that why we end up with this custom hardware, this floating point unit? Well, it's not, not so much fiddly. I mean, most computers um, preserve the carry when they add two values together. So if you add two 32-bit numbers that produce a value greater than 32 bits, they preserve that bit and let you add it on. So you can use multiple registers to do it. Um, but you just have to then do two operations, two add operations, one after the other. If you know the operations are going to do this, you can build your hardware to do that in one go. So we could build hardware that would add these together. There are lots of things you can spot where you could early out. So for example, if the exponent was such that these end up so far apart, that you know adding this onto this, where there's all zero bits along here assumed, isn't going to make any difference to this, you can say, well, actually, I don't need to do that, and just ignore it. If you know the number zero, you can ignore it, and so on. So there's, there's ways you can speed things up when writing the software, and I suspect the hardware does similar things, although it probably doesn't need to. Um, the interesting thing, if you think about the way the mathematics work, unlike integer numbers, where multiplying integer numbers is trickier than addition, because you end up having to do lots of shifts and adds into the different things, multiplying two floating point numbers is relatively straightforward compared to addition, because we just have to multiply the two mantises, adding the extra bit back in if it's there, and then add the exponents together. So multiplication actually becomes much simpler to do with floating point numbers and addition, because the addition requires us to unpack everything and push the bits around to get things in the right place. Now I've got the token, so I can load a value in, add the value from my register into it, and store it back and hand the token. And now I've got the token again, I can load something into, it, into my register, add something onto it, throw it back, and pass the token on. And I've got it, so I can load the value in, add the value from my register, store it back.